All right, the game of the week in the SEC. Let's kick it on down to Fayetteville, where Arkansas and Texas A&M are going to meet in Arlington once again. Arkansas leads the all-time series here 41-33 to with three ties. But Texas A&M has won nine in a row in the series. That's an all-time high for the Aggies. And it matches the longest win streak in the series. Arkansas had nine wins uh, from 1958 to 1966. So, hey, records on the line here in Arlington this week. And, you know, I mean, I honestly, at this point, I could see either team winning this game. It would not be a shocker either way. Both teams, very physical at the line of scrimmage. I think Arkansas's got the advantage there, though, uh, based on what we've seen leading up to this point. Texas A&M still a work in progress on that offensive line. And how is that? I think last year you'd say Arkansas didn't have the defensive line to take advantage of that. They, well, they certainly do now with big John Ridgeway. He's in there just causing havoc with uh, Trey Williams and uh, Martel Usi, the uh, transfers from Missouri. I mean, Arkansas just added to the beef they already had on that defensive line. We all know about uh, Arkansas's linebackers. This is going to be an old-school slobber knocker type game, and I think both defenses uh, will have the advantage here on this game. So uh, points may be at a pre premium here in Arlington, and I think this is – you know, for as big as uh, – for all the struggles that Arkansas has had in recent seasons before Sam Pittman came here, despite all that, for whatever reason, this Texas A&M series has been very, very tight. And I think this is going to be the best Arkansas team that uh, Texas A&M has potentially seen since they joined the SEC nine years ago or ten years ago or whenever the hell it was. But, uh, you know, that's got to give me confidence if I'm an Arkansas Razorback fan that we're taking the best Razorback team in damn near a decade here down to Arlington to face a Texas A&M team that, hey, they deserve their uh, incredible hype, but at the same time, they have struggled at times this season. So you may be able to take advantage of them just like you did Texas. Hell, everybody and their mother was picking Texas to win in that game, uh, and I think the vast majority of people were We'll be picking Texas A&M to win this game, and I think the uh, Arkansas Razorbacks wouldn't have it any other way. So let's kick it next to uh, Sam Pittman, who talks uh, about what he's seen from Zach Calzada, who, if you watched uh, Texas A&M play here this season, really looked shaky there against Colorado until the fourth quarter, and he carried over that momentum into the game against New Mexico, looked very sharp. Uh, Sam Pittman kind of echoes those same sentiments. Uh, and on uh, Texas A&M's roster here, uh, assembled by Jimbo Fisher. And they were struggling offensively in the Colorado game two weeks ago, and then Calzada came in and led him to the win. What did you see from him from that game to the next game, what they did with him? Well, he's playing with more confidence. He's more accurate with the ball. They're, they're protecting him better. Um, seemed like the routes are crisper. You know, they, uh, you know, I think he's got belief. The wide receivers tied in, has belief in him. You know, uh, you can kind of see it. Uh, however, I really like New Mexico on defense. You know, they 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 flew around to the ball, played extremely hard, but uh, as well as Colorado. Um, but I think it's just that the second game he he had a little more confidence. Looked like he was throwing the ball in rhythm a little bit better, and and uh, I think he's a fine quarterback. He wouldn't be at A and M if he wasn't. Sam, uh, what do you think of their defensive line? And just what do you think about, I guess, the talent that Jimbo's built up there just overall? Yeah, and they're continuing to do that too. Jimbo's an elite recruiter, elite coach, um, very talented. They're a little bit like us in the fact that they can play a lot of people. You know, um, you want to stay out of third and long. They have nice third down package on defense. And they have some pass rushers they can get home, uh, which they've proven it this year. Um, so, you know, you're gonna have, we're going to have to do a good job on first down, trying to stay out of third and long, and we have to have a really good package on third and long if we're in it. You can't just go, well, we're not going to get in it, and then next thing you know, it's third and ten. We have to prepare to stay out of it, and then once we – if we get into third and long, we have to be able to convert, and, and that's hard to do because they have a nice uh, third down package. All right, so with Sam Pittman's got a lot of respect – for this Texas A&M team, 
and he should because this is if Arkansas wins this game, they are going to have to earn it. This is uh, not going to be like it was against Texas where you just abused their line of scrimmage. I just don't think you're going to be able to do that. In particular, Texas A&M's defense, it's incredible. Uh, the Aggies are the only team in the country allowing less than 100 passing yards per game. And K.J. Jefferson, while he did have a hell of a game last week against Georgia Southern, uh, you know it'll be imperative that he does that once again if uh, the Arkansas is going to find success against A&M because they are, they've got some lockdown corners and – more importantly, that front seven is just, they're incredible. So running lanes might be tough. Of course, you've got a damn sledgehammer of a quarterback. You've got a very deep and talented backfield to go with a one hell of an offensive line that continues to get better and better under Sam Pittman. So, man, I these matchups are tremendous, and I just cannot wait for it. Only problem, in my opinion, and, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but after – Texas A&M got to host Arkansas last year. Really a damn shame that uh, Arkansas didn't get to turn around and host Texas A&M in Fayetteville. That's the way it should be, and that's the same sentiment echoed here by Sam Pittman on Monday. Um, hey, Sam, obviously you guys had to go to A&M last year. Now it's back at a neutral site. Um, how do you feel about that? And I know there's obviously still years left on the contract, and Jerry Jones obviously is a huge booster and it means a lot to this program. How do you feel about having to go to A&M and then you don't get them in faith. Yeah, I don't I don't feel great about it, to be honest with you. I mean, um, I get the situation, you know, I understand last year. Um, but you know, I going over there and then going neutral, you know, to me, go over there and we but we're in a contract. I understand that, you know, if you really look at our situation over the next five games, um, we have three home games and we play in this stadium once, you know, in the next five games. And, uh, you know, I believe that if we're in this stadium, we're hard to beat because of our fans. And uh, so, listen, everybody else thinks, I know oh, Coach throwing out excuses. No, I'm not. We ain't played a game yet. I feel very confident we can go in and play well at Dallas Cowboys Stadium. I do. But would I rather have them in here? Yes. So we all get why this game has to be played at Arlington. There's a contract, Jerry Jones connection, all that. You certainly don't want to piss off the biggest booster to the program. But uh, I think Sam Pittman is counting down the days for this contract. And uh, I'm ready to see this thing go back to home and home. And at this point, I just don't see the purpose that it serves going down to Arlington, particularly if you look at a year like this where – Arkansas has got uh, so few home games in conference play. It, uh, it really could potentially really set you back. Uh, Arkansas, if they didn't have such a strong team, they may have to pay the price for this wonky scheduling. 